everybody, Randy here in the Eastwood Garage with another live video. Today I've got Ryan here and he's going to show off his 79 Ford pickup truck and all the mm -hmm. coatings and uh, specialty paints he's used recently. But first, as always, if you have any questions, Scotty C's over here to take them for you. Scott, how's it going? It's going pretty good. So, yep, I'm over here on Facebook and on YouTube. So if you have any questions, make sure you ask them. And for anyone who's in the vicinity, uh, try to see if you can make it into the Fall Hershey Swap Meet. We are going to be there October 4th through the 7th. So come check us out. We're going to be out in the Red Field. Red Field. Yes. How many how many vendors are there? This is one of the biggest swap meets in the world, right? Sure is. Yeah, there's there's 9,000 flea market spots. So there's a lot of vendors there. Yeah, there's uh, 9,000 flea market spots. We're in what? In the Red Field, 38 to 39 and 40. I think yep, we've got 38 three to booths, 40. 1,000 cars in the car corral and about 15 cars in the car show. And it starts today, yep. Wednesday. So if you go out Wednesday, Thursday, Friday are the three best days for the swap meet. And Saturday is more of the car show. Yep, so, so make sure you make it out Just check out there. Eastwood. They got a website. You can look up Eastwood there. But back to Ryan and his truck. Um, if, you, if you follow us uh, on email, mm -hmm. last week you had a nice R&D corner about all the coatings and everything you've used. Or if you've been following our live videos, we've been checking in every couple of weeks on his Ford pickup truck as he just uh, you know, tears it apart and makes it look yeah. new again. So let's check out what you've been doing. All right. Well, yeah, like Randy said, we did a, uh, the R&D video last week. What we do is we kind of showcase all of the paints we used in the you know transmission and the transfer case overhaul itself. So I mean we took these things out. I mean the transmission had leaks all over it. Transfer case was full of just mud, uh, sand, dirt, all sorts of oil grease. Cleaned everything up, and I mean we couldn't just put it back in there. So we had to you know we wanted to make sure it stays uh, looking this good for a long time. So what we did is we actually used a lot of our uh, detail paints to uh, to you know, recoat these uh, these two components before we get them back in. Uh, basically what we did here is uh, before we painted anything we took and actually smoothed the, um, the surface of the transmission itself with our aluminum compo compound filler up here in the front, uh, sanded it down, made a real nice surface, got rid of a lot of the parting lines when it was originally made, things like that. Um, you know, next we moved on to the self-etching primer. We painted both of these with self-etching primer you know, to help adhesion, you know, make, make sure we have a good bite when we want, wanted to get to our top coat. Uh, after we had uh, the, uh, the self etch on, we moved on to the top coat of the Aluma Blast here on the transmission. You can see they're being, uh, being sprayed. And then on the transfer case itself, I uh, use our spray gray detail paint, which you know, replicates the look of cast iron. Um, after everything uh, dried, we wanted to make sure, you know, give it a little bit of more durability. Uh, actually sprayed this down with our 2K um, matte clear. Uh, got everything looking real good. Uh, as you can see right there is the, uh, the spray gray being uh, painted. Um, and then next you'll actually see the, uh, the, the clear that's coming out. So, so, so the nice thing about the 2K clear, you said for mm. added durability, and that's because yeah. it's a two component. Correct, yes. Two yep. component paint. I can grab it here and maybe bring it in a little closer. So, I mean, we show this off all the time. Mm. And, uh, oh, there we go. And basically what it is, you, you pop off this cap. Uh, there's a little plunger here. And inside there's a little canister that has an activator in it. So you just pop that and you shake it and you get a a really durable two component uh, paint in a you know in an aerosol can so you have the durability because it's a cat it's a fully catalyzed fully catalyzed paint like you'd spray out of a, out of a spray gun and right. you know you just top coat it so you get the great appearance of the aluma blast or the mm -hmm. spray gray but then you get the durability because it's got a two component paint on top of it exactly and the other great part about this is that the the, uh, the idea i had behind this whole project was show you guys what you can do with spray cans you know rattle cans at home in your in your garage or in your driveway to me everything i'm using here there's no real you know specialty equipment required paint guns and things like that big compressors um you know paint booths I'm doing all this here, you know, outside shooting or in, in an open room. So we're just using spray cans for all of this kind of work we're doing. So now, came out looking great so far. Yeah, everything looks great. Now let's move on. This yeah. has to be the nicest looking boat anchor I've ever seen. Hey, it's a Ford engine, sir. <laughs> is that what it is? That is, that is, that is. So, uh, yeah, I mean, it, it looks great and it's a brand new engine though, right? Yeah, it came out, it came out very well. This is a re, one of the remanufactured engines from ATK. Uh, we'll be putting up on the website here in a few weeks and we'll actually start uh, offering these for sale. But uh, basically what we did was we got a replacement stock engine for this, upgraded from a 351M to a 400, um, and then just started you know, cleaning, everyth cleaning everything up, um, painting, the, uh, painting the block, painting the components and everything that goes on it, and then you, you got what you, what, you, what you see here. Uh, some of the stuff I used basically was the, uh, the 2K, primer on the engine itself. Well, actually, let me back up. What I did first was actually remove the, um, the black paint that came on the engine. I used our down the metal 
uh, first and cleaned everything up and got all of the oil and grease and then that paint actually taken off of it. Because even though it's a reman engine, it still has, you know, uh, assembly lube all over and everything and the paint itself wasn't, uh, uh, I wanted to put something, you know, a coating of Eastwoods on. So we, we got everything off of there, primed it with our 2K primer. What this does is it gets a real... Watch out, nice. man. Nice. Well, good they switched over to the other screen. Uh, get, gives it a, the ability to have a real nice bite into, the, uh, into the, the actual metal. Gets it ready for our color, which you see being sprayed there right now. Uh, so they, they uh, primered it up, got the color put on, uh, and then we got it to this point where we're at now. Uh, next, I started playing around with a lot of our... Uh, metal blackening. So you'll see here in the front the water pump uh, pulley, uh, on the crankshaft pulley, and then you'll see more uh, more pieces around this engine, especially the oil pan. I almost, almost forgot about the biggest piece. Yeah. Uh, we sprayed that thing with the the metal blackening system we have. It gets a real nice coating on there, real tough coating. It's, um, it's I mean, it's durable. It's resistant to dot three brake fluid, yeah. even gasoline. Yep. So it's a it's a really good. It's a really good coating, and, and it looks great. Actually, yeah, too. I love. Yeah, I love the the satin look of it. Uh, really replicates the look of the OE uh, when when it first comes off of the line. I did a lot of the bolts as well. You'll see around this engine, um, a, lot the, uh, a lot of the bolts were done. So I mean, we were really getting getting pretty far on this. Um, next, the next coating I used here was on the water pump and the and the fuel pump itself. This is our detail gray, which is up here. So that's going to be this this coating right here. So that replicates the, the, uh, the steel replication, so it, it looks like real steel does. So instead of you know, having um, you know, just the pump, the pump on there bare, eventually it's going to rust. We actually took and put the, the detail gray on here, then also used the same 2K matte clear um, on it as well and the fuel pump. And I mean, um, it, it really does look good. Mm -hmm. And the, the 2K, like you said it's durable because it's two component plus what, 650 degrees Correct. temperature? Yep. So you have that as well? Right. So, so. The, the last thing I did up here is uh, actually before I uh, took this engine apart, I had this setup brought in, taking carb setup on it. But before I actually put it on the engine, the old engine, um, I actually took this bare cast aluminum um, and sprayed it with the, with the same 2K clear. Uh, makes it easy for when dirt and everything kind of gets into the, into the porous area, it blocks off those porous areas of the open aluminum and makes it able to, you know, dirt and, and grease like things won't stick to it. And you can tell this was on there for almost a year and there really isn't anything stuck to it at all. So, I mean, I just kind of brushed it off and bolted it back on here and it's ready to go. Now, we've got, we've got a brand new product to show people mm -hmm. and we've got to check out what we're going to do in the truck next. But yep. maybe we'll check in before we do all this. We'll go over, check in with Scott, yeah. see if he has any questions for us yet on okay. any of the paints or coatings we've been using. Sure, I do. So there's two of them that are a quick knockout. Uh, one of them, they want to know how long the 2K cans last for after they've been activated. And depending on where you're at, usually around 70 degrees, you get about 48 hours. Uh, out of one of those cans. So it's certainly something you have plenty of time to apply it and it's not going to just harden up on you. Uh, second one also would be the temperature rating on the metal blackening and that's good up to 600 degrees. Cool. Thanks so a lot. We're going to knock those two out. If you have any more questions, just post them on Facebook or YouTube and uh, Scott will answer them or throw them out to us. Yeah. We're, we've got the brand new Concourse paint gun mm -hmm. which came out this week and we're going to get to that in a minute. But first, you want to head over to your truck. Yeah show everybody what we're going to do and yeah. you know what they're going to see in some upcoming videos yep so we're we'll going kind of give you an update about where we're at here on the truck itself you can see you know where we've been what we've been doing um and then this is where we're at so right now when we have the truck here I and mean, we're down to the bare frame obviously here in the front end um we've done some painting underneath we've been doing a lot of cleaning i've used our rotary uh rotary removal tool a ton on this thing it's getting rid of all the dirt and the frame rails things like that uh, then just cleaning it up with some pre, getting uh, using our, our, our cell fetch, not only on the frame here, but I'm actually working down here on the floor. You see the, man the manifolds. I got, I got two new headers for, or yeah, two new headers, a set of new headers for this thing. The old ones were really pitted. Uh, I wasn't putting them back on this engine because it just wouldn't look very good. So uh, what I did is I got a set of hooker headers and then they just have the high temp black coating on it. It's got to come off. It's not there, or it's not, it's not a high temp coating. It's just an anti-rust coating. So it's got to come off and they got to be coated again. So what I basically did is I saved myself some time on this, on, on this set of headers by actually starting with our down the metal. So I, you know, I rubbed the down the metal on the actual uh, painted surface, got rid of a bulk of the paint. And the down the metal is a paint and powder stripper. Correct. Yes. Stripper. Yep. Yeah. Uh, once I had, once I had most of the paint off, obviously there's a little, little nooks and crannies you can't get to, things like that. That's when the actual header itself went into the blast cabinet. So I used our, our large blast cabinet and, you know, cleaned everything up mm -hmm. to the, the, the stage you're at now. Now keep in mind, this was uh, two weeks ago when this was done, uh, and this header's not rusting at all. Uh, hence the, the, the cell fetch we have here. Uh, I mean, basically, a, a fast quick, etch. Fast etch, yes. So I, 
a quick uh, spray down with a fast etch, and this I mean, it leaves that phosphorus coating, so you know it's ready. It gives it a good bite for when the, uh, I actually do start painting with the coatings. And what we're going to start using here, uh, we have three different high temp coatings. We have the matte finished silver. I'll wait for Joe to get up here. There we go. The matte, the matte silver here. Uh, I believe I'm going to actually put these back into a black matte. Uh, as well when I went to do it, actually it's satin, satin black. And then also if you're doing, say, like a, uh, a factory iron. Uh, like an exhaust manifold? Manifold, something like that. We have the, the, the factory gray as well. So we have three different coatings. I believe they're 1,400 degrees uh, yep. was what they, what they actually uh, resist up to. So they're a great coating. Actually, the old headers on this truck, I mean, they, they were really, really pitted when I cleaned them up and blasted them and then uh, painted them with silver. Actually, the silver still looks fine. It's just the metal still looked pitty, so I, yeah. wasn't, I wasn't putting that back in. So, so um, next steps on this truck, really? Well, well, the other day you were spraying some rubberized rusting capsules. Yeah, if yeah. Joe can get, if we can get Joe in the shot here. So we we started up under the cab. Yeah. And if you if you guys can see, the whole underside of the cab is now is now done with our rubberized rust encapsulator. Uh, sprayed everything down. Took about uh, about two and a half three cans to do the the complete underside of this cab. So you know, put a nice coating on the underside. Everything's ready now on the bottom of the cab. And we can actually, you know, switch over to, um, you know, firewall and frame. And the rubberized rust encapsulator basically combines rust encapsulator with undercoating. Because typically, you'd, you'd run a, if you're using undercoating, you want to get everything clean. Yeah, you want to get all that rust off. You don't want that rust to be stuck under there with our rust, uh, rubberized rust encapsulator. I mean, you knock off the big stuff, get all the grease and oil and dirt and things out of there, uh, including the, the, the big rust. And then you can put this over and encapsulates it and puts a rubberized undercoating on it. So, so then, um, so then the next step is just. Yep. So next, the next we're going to start working on the the frame itself. We're going to use our rust encapsulator on. You know, we're going to encapsulate this whole frame. I've removed mechanically a lot of the rust on here, but I want to make sure that none of it comes back. This frame's actually in a pretty good shape, uh, rust-wise. But in the future, I wanted to keep it, you know, keep it in the, in the uh, condition that it is. So rust encapsulator first, and then we're going to switch over to our, our 2K matte black uh, chassis black. So this frame's going to come out looking real good. Um, and another nice thing about those 2K, I mean, you buy a can, mm -hmm. when you're done, it's, it's done, you, there's no cleanup, like a, like a paint gun. Yeah. You don't need a, you don't have to buy a paint gun, you don't have to buy an air compressor, the lines, the filtration system, you don't have to do any of that. Yeah. So if you've got a small project like this, it's great, because you just buy a can or two, mm -hmm. you have everything done, exactly. it's minimal investment, and you know, and, and you get the same quality results, really. Exactly, right, right. So, oh, one other but, thing about a show, if Joe get in here. Which, which mm. is pretty cool. You were working on some wiring. Most of it's not. We're starting on it, but he'll probably see it. Is these, we have these. Uh, these are the weather packs. Uh, if you want, I can actually even show you on the transmission over there. The other hand, the other ha uh, half that's actually looks a little bit better. When we get back over, yeah. yeah. Well, I guess we're heading back over. Yeah. But the cool thing is you're rewiring it. So you want to mm -hmm. cut off all those old connectors. It gives you male and female connectors. You mm -hmm. can make your wiring new and make sure right. it works again. Exactly, yeah. So. I'm, I'm going to put these connectors where we need. I'm going to solder the, the, the wires in where in, in the different spots. I have some bad grounds in here. This whole mess is going to be cleaned up. We're going to use our, our weather pack system, and we're actually using a DEI uh, Easy Loom system as well. You'll see over here uh, yeah, on the, on the end of the over. transmission. <clears throat> and then we got to check out the uh, paint gun yeah. as well. So this is the half that looks a lot nicer. So this already has the DEI um, Easy Loom on it. This is our... Uh, our new uh, weather pack end on the end. So this is all ready. That actually plugs into the other half that's up there in the firewall. So I'm going to do the whole wiring, underhood wiring harness in, in this stuff. You know, it's fire resistant. It's a lot better than that plastic stuff you can guys can, you can get out of the retail and stores. it looks nice. Oh, well, yeah, it looks a lot nicer. Should we check out the paint gun? Sure. On the way over, let's see yeah. if Scott has any more questions. Scott, you have any... Is there any more questions? Yeah, the one we do have <laughs> is not our product related, but they want to know if you're going to wrap your headers or leave them like that. I'm going to leave them like that. Um, I, think, I mean, I, I think header wrap's a good thing on certain things. I mean, I like the look of it, and it actually is the functionality of it. I just actually want to leave them black for right now. It's a good yeah. look. Yeah, yeah I, I, like, I like the way that look is, especially with the rest of the metal blackening on the engine. It's kind of why I'm thinking I want to leave them the way they, uh, the way they are. So, so, brand new, new Concourse product. paint gun. I got, I, got two, I got two new products to talk about here when they were kind of both kind of sitting here. So we have the new Concourse 2. This is the same great gun, uh, you know, same great quality gun that we have in the original Concourse with some upgrades, basically. Uh, what we have here is the Concourse 2 itself. So if I can hold this up. Um, 
you know, it's a great quality gun, comes with the cup and everything. The main, the main difference in this gun here is actually uh, the, the fan control has now been moved up in line. So no matter if you're, you're right-handed, left-handed, no matter where you are, you're free-hand. If you're right-handed, you can get on your fan control. If you're left-handed, you can get on your fan control. Um, in the, old, in the old gun, basically, your fan control is over here on the left. So if you're left-handed, you're, you're trying to reach over and you're possibly you know, spilling your cup out or anything else when you're trying to actually change your fan control depending on where you're painting on the vehicle. So, I mean, it's a very good gun. It, has a, it comes in here with the 1.7 uh, needle nozzle kit. Uh, one of the other big differences, this comes with the, uh, the nice new case, kind of similar to our Pro Set. Plus, it gives you a 1.3, right? Yeah. So you get so, a 1.3 and a 1.7 yes, needle I, nozzle. I'm not so you can spray pretty, pretty much... Most clears, colors, primers. Exactly. It is. So I mean, if you, if the uh, the Concourse Pro is obviously our be our best gun in the line, this would be the middle of the line, and of course you have the the, the uh, Concourse LT as the lower end of the line. Um, this comes with everything like, like I was saying you need. You get your regulator, you get your 1.7, your 1.3 millimeter nozzle, um, everything you need. Nice case. Put it away. Uh, you know, a lot of the DIY guys are not using these you know, paint guns as much. Mm -hmm. You're not using them every day like a pro guy would. So, you I mean, you want to keep it out of the way, keep it clean. So, your next question is, well, I already have a paint gun. I don't need to get your new Concourse 2. I'd still love to get your new Concourse 2 because it's awesome. But, you know, I really don't need a new one. Well, this case actually is now going to be offered as a separate item as well. So what you'll be able to do is most, uh, uh, most uh, non-Eastwood guns will fit in here. Uh, every Eastwood gun I've checked has fit in here. The only issue I've seen really for the most part is when the cup doesn't fit for some of the other manufacturers. And really it's very simple to fix that issue. Just trim, trim, the, uh, trim the foam in the case. So these cases, they, the small case here is actually now available for uh, if you already have some paint guns and things like that at home, you know, put them in the case, keep it protected, keep dirt out of it. Um, or if you don't have yeah. a paint gun, you don't go ahead and get the gun. concourse too. So the, uh, yeah, this thing. And it's, it's all stainless internals. Mm -hmm. And so you, you can spray waterborne, you can spray solvent, solvent based paints. It is really comfortable in your hand too. Yeah, yeah the ergonomics of it is a lot better. It's balanced. Yeah, small hands like me, it's very, very important. So it feels really nice. Yep. And you can operate this one in most home compressors, you know, four, four and a quarter CFM to five CFM on this thing at 30 PSI. So, I mean, it's something you can use at home. It's not going to require a, a, a ginormous compressor to run. Yeah, you can so. paint with small compressors. I mean, you yep. may end up painting in parts instead of the whole yep. thing at once. Yep. But a lot of guys have to do that anyways because they don't have the space. Right. So, so. yeah, check and it out. If you need a compressor, our scroll compressors are coming out. So, yeah. you know, if, if you're thinking about getting a compressor, you need to visit Eastwood and just check out our compressor line as well as our brand new scroll compressor and learn about that technology. Exactly. So, cool. well, thanks a lot. Yeah. I guess we'll check in with Scotty one more time. We're Scott, good. how's it going? We're good. We're good. And hey, I, where are we at from now through the weekend? We're at the, the Fall Hershey uh, get together. Swap me in Hershey, Swap Chocolate Sorry. Town, I'm Pennsylvania, in, or maybe, Chocolate Town, USA. Exactly. Yeah. You can always swing over and get some chocolate while you're out there, too. Is a Hershey yeah. happy? Yep. So, all right. Well, thanks, Scott. Well, thanks a lot, Ryan. Good. And uh, yeah, don't forget, keep checking in. Um, we're coming live every Wednesday at 3. We're going to also try to co go live during the week. Um, maybe uh, later this week or next week, you know, we'll just go live randomly as we're working on this truck, um, as we're doing some pretty cool stuff to it and show you all the coatings. So, thanks a lot. Let's go cool. check this thing out. Yes, keep working. Thanks.